Hi, Ian. Um, so just with regards to those contours that you're looking for, I'm still not entirely clear on, on what you need exactly, but I'm going to run through what I think you mean. So you're talking about the, the depth of uh, esterel, um, which is sterile, something sterile, or and then the gravel. So, so what I want to do is I'm just going to add um, the data that I have um, for those pits. So if I go to, where have I got them? I've got them somewhere here. So these pits. Okay, so I've got these pits, let's say. And then in that, you've got, you're wanting to create, I guess, a contour of the depth using these pits. So if, if these values uh, for these points is consistent, you might get some sort of, uh, well, across a number of different points, you might get sort of like a contour showing where the expected depth might be uh, between them. So anyway, that's that's what I'm thinking you need. So if I if I open up the attribute table and then look at the values that you've got here. So there's esterol and then this, which I used Google to find out is gravel. So I didn't know that was gravel. So let's create, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a elevation file. So I guess these are depths, right? So these are actually negative. So possibly where that is 17, that is a depth of 17. So I guess these should be negative values. So maybe that's the first thing I'll do. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna quickly create a, a new column, and we'll call it sterile. Uh, I'll just make it a decimal number. Okay, and it is going to be this esterol value. Um, Let's multiply that by minus one. Oops. So let's see what we get. Okay, so now we should have a new field here. So these are depths. So that that value that was 17 should now be minus 17, I guess. There we go. Okay, so that is a depth. All right, so let's have a look at what we can do with that. So if you're wanting to extract contours, you should be able to go to extraction and then select contours, okay? But now it's going to ask you for for an input layer. So we can not choose an input layer here. Well, maybe it's because I'm in an editing session. Let's just stop that. Go back there. Contour. Okay, so it's not letting me use an input layer here. Now, there's obvious reasons for that, and that is because this is not a surface yet. It's a, it's a point file. So I need to convert this to a raster. So I can do that using a tool where we do an interpolation. So it's a tin interpolation. So we go tin interpolation. Now we're going to use that. The attribute we're going to interpolate on is that new value. We'll add it. Okay. The extent can be the extent of the layer. Uh, and there's only one layer in our view. Now this is the number of rows it's going to create. So these are pixels. So uh, meter by meter, let's say. Um, if we made it one, that's pretty big. We can make it two, and this just changes the resolution of your size. So a pixel size of of one meter. Well, it's not. A yeah, it's it's essentially a, a size of one meter for your cells on your grid. Right. So let's just settle on one, and then it's going to have an output place. Let's create a temporary file, and just run that and see what it looks like quite a small area so it should be quite quick and there we go okay so this is pretty messy now now part, part of the reason that it looks like this is because it has a um, it's interpolating the values between the two so if it's got two it doesn't have enough points in between them to actually get a a, a an accurate uh, reflection of, of what the values are. So it kind of does a little estimation. So now this is a depth file. Okay, so now if you click anywhere, we can put these on top just as a matter of interest. And let's make them much smaller. Uh, let's make them one. And then I'll change the boundary. I don't want a boundary on that. And then make them red. Okay, so there they are. So if I zoom in over here, and then I select my interpolated raster. So now this is a temporary raster, um, or digital elevation model, or DTM, digital terrain model. Um, 
which we created using the triangulated irregular network interpolation method. And so now it's going to estimate the difference between a couple things. So for instance, if we, let's label these and we can see how that looks. So I'm going to label those and it's on sterile, sterile, okay, there we go. So we've got some labeled values there. Okay, so there's m that's minus six, that's three, minus three, minus three, minus three. So, so this is sort of a consistent, uh, what well, well looks like a uniform sort of um, difference between these. So that kind of makes sense. So now if we use the interpolated option and then selected our little information tool and clicked between minus 2.6 and minus 1.5, we'd expect this to be like, I don't know, minus... 2.4 or something like that and there it is there minus 2.4 so you can see it's kind of estimating the distance between them so it's created a surface model from the points and that is the only way that we can interpolate or extract a contour so now let's say we've got this interpolated model and this is a temporary file so why don't we make this a permanent one because it, it kind of shows what we expect to see so so I'm gonna make that permanent and I don't see a make permanent option. So all I'm do going to do is export it. So I'll say save as, and then uh, if the GeoTIFF is fine, I'll go stick it in our um, project folder, somewhere here. Uh, working maybe, working raster. Okay, this is fine. We'll just call it um, DEMSTR. S-T-E-R, S-T-R, that's fine. It doesn't really matter what the name is. Okay, everything else. That is the extent. That is fine. It didn't say extent of current layer. Calculate from, from layer, yes. Yeah, yeah, so calculate from current layer. That is fine. Anything else? Mm, nope. No data values. Uh, this is all fine. Let's just say okay. Okay, so now that one can rem we can remove. That was the temporary layer which is being stored in our memory. This is the new one which is permanently on our hard drive. Okay, so the next thing we need to do now, we can do a um, contour extrapolation, extraction. So if we go extraction, contour, let's zoom to the full extent, zoom to layer. And we go contour, extraction, contour. So now we do have a raster Whereas previously it wasn't allowing us to do it from a vector point file, but it will let us do it from a raster. We can select the interval between the contours. So we set, we created a, a, a tin with a, um, a resolution or a pixel value of one. So I guess we could do one, but let's just do two. I don't want this to be too big a file. So let's make that two. So it's going to be two meter distances between the contour lines. The value in the new, so this is crea actually creating a vector layer and a line vector layer. The, the column or the field is going to be called elev for elevation. We can call that anything we like actually. Um, let's leave it as, as elev. Okay, this is all fine. And contours. Let's make a permanent file as well. Save to file. And let's go back to our project data. Uh, where's working? Let's just call this contours. But now contours for what? I guess so it's contours in this case for is that? I don't know if I spelled that right. That's fine. Run and close. Okay, so now why? Maybe one meter would have been better. Let's change that down to one meter. We could even go half a meter if you wanted to. So we do the same thing, the same query. We're using that layer. We'll make this one. Elev. Let's do a temporary file. It takes a bit longer because we, we, we've changed the interval. We can remove that one. I'm just going to delete this one. And then what I'll do is I'll just actually go and make this permanent and then uh, give it the same name as the, uh, the layer we just created for the two meter contours. So yeah, where are we going here? GIS working. SRL. What you could actually do there is you just go 1M. So w 1 meter contours. So now you know what that is. And OK. OK, so now if we turn off the uh, 
we can turn off the, the labeling for this tool we've got no labeling and then maybe make this color slightly different so we can see it what color blue maybe maybe a blue that we could see on top of that some light blue something like that okay uh, possibly turn on a background uh, satellite image and then turn the actual layer off I am actually not loving that color especially on top of of on top of that um, satellite image maybe orange would be better maybe just change the thickness up to 0 0.4 okay so we've got the these contours and we can go and label on that elev field so it would have created an elev field okay so now there's the, m the values so we can I don't like it when it's above the line like that I prefer it to be on the line so we can go curved on the line and there we go so now I don't know if that's what you wanted but when I hear contours that's what I understand them to be so now with these contours provided you have enough input points um, to start with you should then be able to have a fairly accurate estimation or interpolation of what the estoril depth might be between two points so it'd be interesting to see if you actually came in here and started digging over here what the value would be so you've got your your surface model as well as your contours and that should be uh, uh, um, nice enough for you or, or decent enough information for you to actually then go and do some estimates of what the the depths might be between two points so yeah um, that's what I understand the problem to be let me know if that helped you in any way okay Ian cheers